Now we want to talk about indirect or inverse variation. Just like direct variation, indirect or inverse variation also has a template equation. Its equation is y equals k divided by x. When you're talking about indirect, the y and the x are across from each other in the equation proportionally. And the wording that you might see might be y varies inversely with x or as x, or y is inversely proportional to x. And we call k the constant of proportionality. Remember that in indirect variation, we also had a constant that we called k. You'll have that as well. Now here's a problem involving inverse variation. It says y varies inversely as the square of x and y equals 0.15 when x equals 0.1. In the directions above the problem in the book, it says find an equation of variation for the given situation. Now every time it asks us to find an equation of variation, step one is actually going to have to be to find that constant k. You can't find an equation of variation without the k. So we're going to have to find k first. Notice that our template equation here is different from direct variation. We have y equals k divided by x this time. So we try to find the two things that are varying inversely. The first thing we come to will go in place of y. The second thing we come to will go in place of x. And it says that y varies inversely as the square of x. We have to be really careful on this one. It doesn't just say y varies inversely with x, which is what our template equation would be. It says that y varies inversely with the square of x. So we have to actually square the x in this equation. So you just want to substitute in exactly as it says. Here it actually tells us what y is, so we're going to put 0.15 in for y. And x, we're going to put... 0 0.1 or square it because it tells us to square the x. Now we're going to have to do math here to be able to get k by itself. In order to get k by itself, we need to multiply, cross multiply. Remember this has an imaginary 1 under it. So in order to do the math, we're actually cross multiplying. So we're going to take our calculator and we're going to square the 0 0.1. and then multiply it by 0 0.15. Whoops, I actually have an error there down. Oh, I put two multiplication symbols. So let's try that again. Point zero 0.01 times, this calculator is very sensitive, 0 0.15. And now hit enter. And I get 0 0.0015. That's what I get for K. 0 0.0015. Now that's just the constant. What we want to do to find the actual equation is to take our constant and plug it into our original equation that we started with. So we have Y equals K, which is 0 0.0015 over X squared. That is my equation of variation, and it's an inverse variation problem. You may actually have some application problems here. We'll look at one of those too. The first thing, of course, we want to do when we see an application problem is to read it. So you need to make sure that you read through the problem. Let me pause it for just a second and you read the problem. When we look at this problem, we want to figure out, first of all, if we're doing direct or indirect variation. And since this problem says that the weight of an object varies inversely as the square of the distance from the center of the Earth, we are talking about inverse variation. So we have a template equation for inverse variation, which is y equals k divided by x. We have to see which two things go in place of y and which two things go in place of x. It's the two things around the phrase inversely. So it says the weight w varies inversely with the square of the distance d. Those are our two things that go in our equation. So weight varies inversely with the square of d. 
if you can check it, make sure that's correct. Weight fit inversely with the square of the distance d from the center of the Earth. Now it says at sea level, 378 miles from the center of the Earth, an astronaut weighs 220 pounds. So we have to stop for just a minute, and we're going to have to find, over here it asks us to find his weight when he is 220 miles above the surface of the Earth. But remember, before you can do these problems, you have to find K. So we have to take our equation that we have, weight W equals K over D squared, and we have to fill it in with what they've given us first. It says at sea level, 378 miles from the center of the Earth. Remember that D is the distance from the center of the Earth. So we're going to put 3978, and we're going to be squaring it. And we know his weight at this position. An astronaut weighs 220 pounds. And you're going to have to do your algebra now. Remember, this is a proportion, so we can put a 1 under it. And we can get k by itself by actually cross multiplying. So you can take your calculator now and you can square 3,978 and multiply it by 220. When we do the math, we find that k is a very large number. So we want to do our next part of the problem. It says find his weight when he is 200 miles above the surface of the earth. If he is 200 miles above the surface of the earth, and at sea level, we were 3,978 miles above the center of the earth, we are now 4,178 miles above the center of the earth. Remember our equation, the distance is from the center of the earth, so we have to use that particular number in there. So we now have this big number of k, which is probably still in calculator. So k would go here divided by distance squared, which is 4,178. So we need to do the math on that one. When we put our math in the calculator, we determine that the astronaut weighs roughly 199 pounds in this problem. Now, when you're doing the application problems, just keep it that you need to find that sentence that tells you whether something's varying directly or indirectly or inversely. And take your template equation, if it says direct, use y equals ks. If it says indirect, use y equals k over x. And substitute in the two things that they're telling you very directly or inversely in the particular problem. Make sure your answer makes sense. If you've gotten an answer of, say, 3,000, I know that's not realistic that someone would weigh 3,000 pounds. So I can tell from my answer that 199 is probably a very realistic answer for this particular problem.